What are the strength and conditioning secrets behind Alex Pereira's incredible kickboxing and MMA success? How does Poatan train to boost his power and cardio? And most importantly, what's the secret behind Pereira's devastating left hook? While Poatan's size, frame, genetics and technique are crucial factors, his workout regime has played a fundamental role in his success. I scrolled all the way to the bottom of Poatan's Instagram page and YouTube channel to reveal his training secrets. So let's get into it. But before I forget, make sure to watch until the end of this video where I will reveal what might be the X factor behind Poatan's powerful left hook. Alex Pereira had his professional kickboxing debut in 2012. Until 2019, he exclusively fought at middleweight at around 185 pounds or 85 kilos. From 2019, he fought at both middleweight and light heavyweight between 85 and 95 kilos. However, Poatan looked considerably smaller when he fought at light heavyweight in kickboxing, where he weighed in at 209 pounds or 95 kilos, compared to his size in the UFC today, weighing in at only 205 pounds or 93 kilos. It appears that Pereira has added a considerable amount of muscle mass between his last light heavyweight fight in kickboxing in September 2021 and his first light heavyweight fight in the UFC about two years later. The extra muscle could also explain why Poatan began to struggle more with his weight cuts before his last middleweight fight in the UFC. Eventually, he moved up to light heavyweight in 2023, where he became the dominant champion he is today with 10 less kilos to cut. To bulk up for light heavyweight, Poatan performed isolation exercises like the hamstring curl or tricep pushdown, but also compound lifts like the squat, deadlift, bench press, or single arm roll. Muscle can be built across a variety of loads and rep ranges. Besides your daily calorie and protein intake, your weekly training volume is the most important factor in muscle hypertrophy. And for at least 10 sets per muscle group per week to maximize your gains. Stay one to four reps shy of failure. Loads can be as low as 30% of your one rep max. Higher reps, less reps in reserve, and more volume per session and per week are more likely to cause muscle soreness and CNS fatigue. This can interfere with your combat sports training. Portan also performed compound exercises like the squat, deadlift, slat push, all weighted pull up and heavier loads to maximize force production. This type of training can also add muscle to your frame depending on your training volume, intensity and caloric state. There are two different types of hypertrophy at play when it comes to bodybuilding versus strength training. Both typically occur simultaneously but to different degrees depending on the training method. High volume bodybuilding appears to have a larger degree of sarcoplasmic hypertrophy with less strength gains. Muscle size increases through growth of the sarcoplasm, the non-contractile part of the muscle which stores fluid and glycogen. Strength training seems to have a higher degree of myofibrillar hypertrophy. Muscle size increases due to more contractile tissue which also boosts strength and power. Perform three to six sets per exercise per week for meaningful strength gains. Research recommends heavier loads of more than 80% of your 1RM to maximize strength. Loads of 60 to 80% will boost both strength and explosiveness. Perform fast reps at 50 to 60% of your 1RM to focus on power. Your weekly volume can be spread out across up to three sessions. This will reduce the impact of your strength training on your technical training. For strength and power, finish your sets before your movement velocity drops below 75%. As your lifts slow down, the focus shifts from strength and power to muscle hypertrophy. If you can't measure movement velocity, simply estimate your reps in reserve. Finish one to two reps shy or failure for more hypertrophy stimulus. This will likely also lead to more soreness and neuromuscular fatigue which will impact your subsequent combat sports training. Leave three to four reps in the tank for strength and power development with less impact on your technical training. To boost his power, Portime also mixes in overcoming isometrics, Olympic weightlifting variations, and plyometric exercises. He performs lower body plyos like broad jumps, vertical jumps, lateral jumps, and single leg bounds. The focus of plyometric exercises should be on exercise execution, intent, and speed. Unless your goal is power endurance, you should avoid fatigue. As you fatigue, force production plummets and the injury risk increases. Therefore, rest should be prioritized if needed. Plyometric exercises can be challenging for your balance and coordination, and they can also be taxing on your joints. Keep it simple and stick to lower volume as a beginner. Increase the complexity and volume over time. Plyos can lead to significant muscle soreness and nervous system fatigue. Keep this in mind when you map out your training week. Portan also performs ballistic exercises like mat ball throws or slams to build upper body power. These exercises also improve explosive core flexion and rotation. 
Alex also incorporates exercises like plank variations or hanging knee raises to train his core. Here's why this matters. A powerful punch requires strong and quick core flexion, extension, and rotation. When a punch is initiated and when it hits the target, the core must be stiff and stable to avoid movement and energy leakage. So are core exercises a must for fighters? It won't hurt to mix in some core exercises, but heavy compound lifts like the squat, deadlift, overhead press, or bent over roll will also build a strong and stable core. Quartan's strength and power mean nothing if he gasses out before he can get the finish. The cardio demands can be even higher in MMA with the element of wrestling and war work, so his conditioning has to be on point. Quartan performs circuit training for muscular endurance. He does shuttle runs and intervals on cardio machines like the assault bike, ski work or rower for energy system conditioning. He also performs low intensity steady state cardio on the treadmill and Stairmaster. Wrestling rounds boost his grappling skills, but also his anaerobic power and capacity, as well as his muscular endurance and VO2 max. When I strolled all the way to the bottom of Poatan's Instagram page, I came across some unique training footage. Could this be the X factor behind Alex Pereira's devastating left hook? He performs boxing drills like hooks and uppercuts on a cable machine, but not just your average cable tower. He uses a nomadic Kaiser machine. So what's that? And how is it different from a normal cable tower or resistance band? With a traditional cable tower, you generate momentum as you perform your reps. You experience more resistance as you initiate the movement and less as you set the weights in motion. You typically decelerate during the end range for better balance and control. Some of you may have noticed this if you accidentally picked the weight that was lighter than you expected. As you perform your first powerful rep, the weight stack suddenly flies up and slams into the top of the machine. With resistance bands, it's the opposite. You have less resistance in the starting position where the band is loose. The resistance increases as you stretch the band and move into the end range. So what about the nomadic cable tower? Nomadic training isn't as heavily researched as traditional resistance training, but it appears to be a useful tool for sport-specific speed and power development. As you set your resistance on the machine, a compressor increases or decreases the air pressure in the system. The pneumatic system eliminates momentum and allows for consistent resistance through the full range of motion. The machine even measures your power output on each rep. This allows you to track and improve your peak power and power endurance on sport-specific movements. One study compared nomadic, ballistic, and free weight training. Participants performed the bench press at different training loads from 15 to 90% of their 1RM. Nomadic training allowed for higher movement velocities across the board, which could improve punching speed. Between 60 and 90% of the 1RM, nomadic training resulted in the highest mean power output. Force, power, and muscle activation were also higher during the last 10 to 20% of the range of motion at 45 to 90% of the 1RM. This means that nomadic training at heavier loads could help maximize punching power through the full range of motion. It may be worth mixing in with your traditional strength and power training if you have access to a machine. However, combat sports training remains the biggest contributor to a powerful punch. Find a great coach and fine tune your technique to become a skilled fighter. Supplement your combat sports training with strength and conditioning. If you want the thinking taken out of your SNC, check out my eight week dumbbell or bodyweight program. Both cover all the principles discussed in this video. They also come with my comprehensive nutrition and recovery guide. Hit the link in the video description or the comments to learn more. Watch this video next for the biomechanics breakdown of Poatan's devastating left hook or watch this video for Habib's strength and conditioning secrets. Like, comment and subscribe for more. As always, train hard, recover smart and fight easy.